Somebody else is coming. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have, an, I have my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the and, poss and possibly the mo the premier mech pilot he here in the t here in our hallowed halls, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. I want to launch every one of you fucking head cannon chipper bastards off of the planet, and if I have to load up in a mobile suit or a mazinger or anything else to do it, I fucking will start. Running now. For that matter, you'd pro you'd probably look you'd probably you'd probably be I would say you'd be desperate enough to load up in an orbital frame, but um but I don't Sorry, but the cockpit jokes write themselves. Yeah. There's al there's also the fact that some people who spend too long in orbital frames tend to go a little crazy. I don't need an orbital frame, I'll just get in an L E V. What was the one that uh that, that... That Leo took over after two, uh, or after one. Oh yeah, the Vic Viper, the one nobody gets to play in multiplayer. I played it in multiplayer. What the hell are you talking about? Well, then you're a bastard, and you shouldn't be playing the, the versus mode anymore. I did. I didn't. I ba I banned it for being for being OP. But it's. But I was thinking you. I was thinking it was. I was thinking it was a case of not playable, not a case of. A odd job situation. No, I said nobody allowed to play for a reason, Monk. I didn't hear the allowed part, so there you go. So, that being said, eight months ago, some of you may recall that we did a bit of an experiment. After seeing the U after seeing the UA L UA um, Los Angeles branch um, fan film project, which is still really, really well choreographed. Yep, with with some pretty with some pretty creative quirk use. I I had we had I had gotten the idea of taking a random hero generator from my time with Marvel Heroic and creating a UA Great Lakes branch. The especially especially since with the amount with the amount of for, with the amount of forest and lack and lack of civilization in large swaths of the Great Lakes, perfect perfect place to set to set up the giant ass training grounds that UA has at their disposal. Plus, he didn't want to go for some place as hot as Texas. He likes his home turf. I like my I like my home. There is there is certainly hometown bias, but there's all, there's also the fact that you're gonna, you're going to be dealing. That you're going to be dealing with a variety of um, environmental situations. Fair. So, so you, so you've got, so you've got ideal, so you've got ideal circumstances to train people in a different, in a variety of different um, circumstances. Be that be that in forest, be that in be that in urban, be that in um, be that in plains. You never know where well, you never know where you might have to go. Like I said, fair. Mm -hmm. There's, but um, after we did that and had and I had a bit of fun with it afterwards when I brought in um, Dave Sil I brought in Dave Silva on to talk about how th how we could integrate some of that into his MetaHumans Rising game, which is actually pretty good. I I thought I had thought about how what why don't give with with all the reconstructions that we've done why don't we try and construct a hypothetical season and thus we bring ourselves to the present day constructing UA Great Lakes and I'd say I'd say before we before we even before we even delve we even delve into it um the first off the idea of U, the idea of UA having having br having branches is some is something that i th something that i think would have would have come naturally simply, be simply because 
UA is see, UA in Japan is the is the most is the most successful um on pay, or at least the most prestigious um hero academy in J in Japan. But And what, it's implied in most of the world. Yeah, but what's stopping them from establishing branches in other regions? Especially especially with the right especially with the massive prevalence of of um hero culture. Yeah, and I think that um, the principal, uh, as super hyper intelligent of an animal as he is, would have already had plans for something like that. Because if you have a lot of branches out there nurturing people who want to be heroes in the best way they can nurture those people, you're more likely to create a responsible hero culture. Mm -hmm. Now... With that said, I th I think one of the first things that we'd have to nail down is whether or not is should we have it that UA Great Lakes is that this is that this is their first this is their first proper year of opening or that they've been around for a while. Um, in our hypothetical world, I do believe that uh, the that UA has been around for a while, even in in the actual source material. Mm -hmm. Um. UA has been prestigious for a long time. It, it has a very well-established reputation, especially with All Might having been one of their alumni. And All Might is a very long-running hero. Um, so I think the branch probably would have been established prior to our particular uh, plucky team of miscreants and and, uh, and misfits. Yeah, I, I, I can go. I can go with that. It's there's the temptation to have them be the first to have the, to have this hero course be the first one out, but um, the more the more that I think about it, the more that this being not the first team, but just the newest team. Yeah, they're going to be the first years, mm -hmm. but not the first of the first years ever. Yeah, and the and obviously the obviously these are. These are going to be. These are going to start out as first years, and if we if we were to continue this onward, which I don't have any plans to in the immediate future, um, we would only be cover in this hypothetical. We'd only be covering their t their time as first years, not as not as se not as second, th third, or f third or fourth years. And of course, the second, third, and then finally fourth year would be an Americanism. Mm -hmm. But. I think, but I think the first thing that we need to do after that is re is reestablish the pl the plucky the plucky band of heroes in training and nail down who we'd have as uh, as uh, uh, to fill certain story archetypes within this construction. And okay, well, and we. We are using the same ten characters that we did eight months ago in that previous experiment, and the the ones that, and I'm going to be listing them off from the top to, from the top to the bottom, and we'll and we'll kind of go into further details on each as we go. Mm -hmm. So the first one is Finn Heiko, hero name Foxfire, Quirk Kitsune. So Finn is the child of two separate immigrant families um part of it japanese the other part of it most likely irish we're not sure which which uh celtic descendancy we wanted to give him yet i'm perfectly fine with irish considering how common finn is in ireland scotland and wales it'll fit in any of the three but yeah irish works i guess of course, given given my, given my own heritage, we could we could say, how about all three? <laughs> I mean, my heritage, I'd just go go Scottish and go home. <laughs> but that's me. Oh, well, the, well, the Midwest has its fair share has its fair share of dreary gray skies as much as Scotland does. Indeed, <laughs> and it also has its uh, share of really good liquor, so uh, it fits. You know what? Fuck it, Scotland. Ha! Well, that that means that Finn. Go ahead. That means that Finn's red hair and 
when he starts getting older, beard are going to be even better. <laughs> but yeah, Finn, Finn Hako, who's the... Now, like, a quirk like Kitsune is a case of exactly what it says on the tin. He acts he acts very much like the like the mythological Kitsune in a, in a lot of regards. Some some control over nearby animals is able to tur is able to turn invisible is able to create mi is able to create minor illusions, and is and is able to um to cr to throw around fireballs. Yes, he creates his own onibi. Uh, for those weebs out there who understand what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um. He tends to use a lot. Of, he tends to use a lot of these in in combination with each other, and I think we decided that he's a bit he's a bit of a long term prankster. He is the kind of person yeah. who will, who will who will set up who will set up a bucket to to fall at a at a precise moment at a precise time, weeks in advance, just to mess with someone. Yes, but it's all in good fun. Mm -hmm. It's never malicious. No. He j he just he just he just likes la he just likes um, setting up traps and laughing when people fall for them. And then when he's asked, his response is always "ancient Chinese secret," <laughs> even though he's Japanese. Again, all part of the joke for him. Yeah. Oh. As far and as far as it, but I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that he. I wouldn't say that he's considered a bad kid in his family. It's mostly because I feel like his family is just as dysfunctional and crazy as he is. I, I would see it more as um, the reason he tricks people at school is because his entire family is a is a stealth trick war. <laughs> this is this, Kitsune is clearly an inherited power. It's yeah. it's much like uh, the Todoroki family. Mm -hmm. um, in this case. Kitsune is probably handed down from the Japanese side of his family. We we haven't decided if the Scottish side of his family had anything, but you know maybe someday. Uh, the whole thing is there's a merry prank war between them, stealth stealth prank after stealth prank, all set up with immaculate artifice. And uh, what the real ancient Chinese secret is is that this is all more practice to keep himself sharp. Since UA it does eventually turn into a boarding school at some point, I assume that at this point it's a boarding school now as well because of world situation. Yeah. But because 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 of that, but but even even with that, I'm pretty sure that the, I'm pretty sure that his family has some has some, has some has some agreed upon rules. On on what you on what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do in prank war. Of course, because you don't want there to be actual hurt feelings in the end. Yeah. Um, I'd say I'd say in that I'd say in that kind of thing, food is off limits. Ah, your favorite thing to prank with, though, monk. Oh. Uh, you'd you'd be kicked right out of the clan. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with your coffee pranks. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> but food and likely um, likely when you are asleep. Not as you're going to sleep or in your sleeping area, but when you are asleep. Mm -hmm. Because being pranked in your actual sleep, no matter what, that's sour notes, that's sour grapes, and uh, somebody's going to start swinging. Yeah. Oh. I'd, say, I'd, say, I'd say also nothing, nothing that would actually get someone hurt. Of course not. Now, now they, it's a now prank. They, if they get humiliated, that's that's perfectly fine. But not, but nothing, but nothing that nothing that's going to cause any lasting physical damage is is allowable. Yep. Now I imagine there are some people in the class who uh, who will be able to uh, naturally counter him, and. Uh, I think no, none more so than someone f much further down the list. Mm -hmm. I'll mention him when we get there. Yeah. Now the second one we have is Kyle, is Kyle Bridger, hero name Jet Falcon, quirk Technomancer. This is another case of exactly what it says on the tin. He he ha he has he has control over technology, a la 
Forge from X Men, and is and is very very good at um at what you could consider guerrilla engineering. He's Lord essentially. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You first. All right. I was going to say modular exosuit, which he made himself. Um, the the mostly mostly because it was the it was the best way for him to use hit him him to use his abilities without with without having to rely on a certain amount of technology being around him. Yep. Um. He. T but even even with even with that, the 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 obvious question is. Well, why why is why is somebody why is somebody who's good with gadgetry in a hero course? Why isn't he in a support course? Um, I think the approach we went with is that for a lot of a lot of his family had had mostly done te had mostly done tech work or had a, or had a certain st had a certain style of um of how of how they did things. He has he want he has no desire to be just a gadget guy. Yeah. He wants to be something more. Mm -hmm. uh, and the f the fact that he's a the fact that he's able to make I'd imagine the fact that he was able to make an exo a working exosuit by himself would cert would certainly get would certainly get recruiters' attention. Yep, especially with the ability to modularly swap in different things as necessary, mm -hmm. and the fact that the exosuit. Uh, the some of the stuff that he always keeps built into the exosuit, such as flight and you know all of the strength assistance and speed assistance, mm -hmm. um, would be very useful beyond just a support role. Yeah, but I do I do see him as a bit of. It would be tempting to say that he's a bit of a tech nerd, but he does have that kind of leaning, um, much in the same way that, much in the same way that he uh, that. In the same way that Midoriya has a bit of a muttering issue whenever he's stud, whenever he's stuttering or not studying, stud, studying um, various heroes, he has that when it comes to technologies. Um, I if you... I think that unlike I think that unlike Deku though, mm -hmm. who is muttering about, well maybe the quirk works this way or maybe maybe it works that way. Wait, how did like when he was doing with Mount Lady? Wait, does she actually expand her volume and her mass and stuff? Instead, it would be. Uh, Actual equations necessary for certain things to function, whether those are energy equations measured in, in the gigajoules, or whether those are things like resistance equations, anything of that nature. He'd be muttering formula rather than hypotheticals. Yeah, I'd say if I if I'd use an, if I'd use another ex another example of his particular um, motif. Um, Gear from Static Shock would actually be would actually be a good example of him. Actually, a good um a good parallel, I should say. Although in the, although in the process he's he's not allowed to he's not allowed to um do to do much when it comes to math class because well the last time he was asked to write a formula he started writing on the whiteboard. And then he forgot that he he forgot that he ran out of space on the whiteboard and just wrote and just wrote on the wall. Yeah, he basically turned into Psy from Doctor Stone. <laughs> oh, but the the approach that I'd go with is is that he's he um he very much has his, he very much has certain certain ambitions that he want that he wants to do. Mm -hmm. and, but the but he has he has a bit. He um, has a tendency to get lost in his own head sometimes, especially when it comes to figuring out problems. Yeah, it's the natural engineering uh, nature that he has. Mm -hmm. The same thing that allowed him to build his exosuit is also kind of the same thing that uh, that hampers him from time to time. It's it's tempting to have him go to have him to have him go with the excitable mechanic idea, but um. We have seen, but we've already seen that we've already seen that kind of motif already, in the in the yeah. in the main show. No need to double dip on that kind of thing. Yeah, this is this is more the absent-minded engineer who gets stuck in his own head. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Next is Zaha Rademacher, who I'd I'd say I'd say Zaha, I'd say Zaha has um has some has has some descent some descent mix of German and Middle Eastern. Mm-hmm. Um, hero name hard hero name hard case, quirk sandcastle. Which this is one of the more interesting quirks that we came that we came up with in the initial in the initial project. Since yeah, she's technically she her quirk is technically a mimic, but it's a indirect mimic. She's able to she's R- able to mim, she's able to mim, she's able to mimic powers that she sees through sand through sand based constructs she creates. Yeah, unlike Monoma from the main show who copies. The last three quirks of people he's touched, um, for a for a specific amount of time, mm-hmm. uh, she s- sees a quirk, and she can come up with a sandcastle construct to uh, to imitate it. Mm-hmm. And not all the constructs have to be person based. I think at one point we had her. We we may have talked about her creating a sand flamen ver for to ver flamen at people. <laughs> yeah, that yeah the the point the point is is that is that it's cre- is that it's is that it's mimicking the effect of that quirk. It doesn't ha- it doesn't have to be a simulacrum of of a person. Um. Yeah. But the 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 approach that the approach that I see with I see with her because of the fact that she's. That she observe, that she observes, and then and then acts is, she is a she is a consummate strategist. She is the kind of person who who would who um would probably would probably spend out would probably spend hours um re- uh in ch- in chess simulations or or um or ha- or probably have a photo of of Kasparov in, somewhere in her room. I can see that. I can also, if we're going to be completely ridiculous about it, see her having a picture of Rogel Dorn. <laughs> she is fortifying this position. Yeah, but the the point the point is that she she prob she probably has a bit has a bit of an obsession with with um strategy games of all, of all sorts, and lo- and loves and loves playing um loves com- loves coming up with. The with um lo- with long game approaches to things, as well as well as, as well as just be, as well as just being able to assess a, a assess a assess the details of a situation very quickly. Yes, but the the uh the the downside is because of her tendency to play the long game and strategy. She may have more trouble with uh, immediate snap judgments. She may be able to assess everything, but that doesn't mean she's going to make a judgment of instant action. Yeah, the the thing there's always there's the old there's the old adage with shogi of looking a hundred moves ahead. Um, I think in her I think in her case she'd she'd want to be able to she'd be she'd be the most afraid of of making a mistake. Even if it doesn't seem like a mistake at first, it could be a mistake two or three or five turns down the line. Yes. Um, and for anyone who's read or watched the Rio's work is never done, a mistake made uh, turns prior can lead to fatal complications with the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, also th- I'm also thinking of... Stu- of... Actually, when it, co- when, it comes to, when it comes to that idea of of ca- of carefully planning things, I will admit I'm. I I had a bit of I had a bit of Akagi on the mind. Mm. Even though even though even though it's not quite a one to one comparison because Akagi is is a master planner but also just a master gambler. Yeah. Up to and including cheating. Yeah, yeah, that's part of what makes Akagi endearing. But the th- but the thing with the thing with Z- the thing with Zaha is I'd I'd also I'd also suspect that she's very very good at cold reading people. 
almost 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 akin to to um to a, to a proper psych to a proper psychiatrist or even even some even some of the reading the little details that Sherlock Holmes is known to do. Oh, she it, with the with the way we've set her up, she seems more like she needs to observe for more time than you would need for cold reading to get a good grasp of something. Like she can get the grasp of the situation and all of the details, but she has to observe the situation. And it's not just a split observation. Yeah. I could, but as if we if we're gonna make the joke about Rogel Dorn, I wonder if she I wonder if she has a if she has a copy of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's books in her bag somewhere. Probably. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh... I wouldn't put it past her to have Sherlock Holmes on there because likely she she empathizes with the the observations and she's trying to find a way to observe faster because mm -hmm. oh. she would she would know best through observing herself her own weaknesses. Yeah. Oh. Next is Oscar Venegas, hero name Pacha Kamak, Quirk Huaka. This is a this is a much simpler quirk than, than some of the others. He ju it's just earth manipulation and creating we and creating um, weapons and armor out of the nearby earth. Yeah, he he uh and he's very clearly of indigenous um, Mesoamerican descent. Mm -hmm. And I'd I'd say I'd say in. We had we had jokingly said that this that this would be our equivalent to Bakugo. He's he's very much the he's very much the um bu the bully of the room. The bully and oh, and extremely confident. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, you can tell from both the quirk name and the and the hero name that he that he thinks of himself as godlike. Yeah, he. D I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that he has a full-on god complex, but he definitely he definitely thinks of himself as the be as the be as the best fighter, and he will let you know of that to the to the point of annoyance. Even if you beat him down just yesterday, like Hadron did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Next is is Aldrich Philby. Hero name Vibrato. Quirk. Diaphragm. Aldrich is is a is a is a perfect mimic. Both being both being able to shape shift as well as well as control as well as control nearby sounds, including including its own voice. I say it because mm -hmm. while it's while on while on paper, um, on his on its identification, Aldrich is 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 written as male. Um, because of because of how, because of how far Aldrich is able to go with that mimicry, it's it's a case of who knows. <laughs> Aldrich's genetics may be X Y, but Aldrich doesn't even remember or care. Because for Aldrich, it's just, it's just another face. Aldrich has a bit of a actor's attitude about things. In old we school, also in old school an old school stage actor not a not a modern day Hollywood prima donna or anything like that yep all the world's a stage mm -hmm. and we all put on masks for stages mm -hmm. um we also decided I remember back then that uh you could actually likely find it, find him it they I'm gonna use him just because it's it's easiest, I guess. Um, the the uh, they they would be in the like the um, the staging halls, but such as Carnegie Hall, playing an entire orchestra's part by themselves because they've shape shifted their body and manipulated the sounds to do so. Mm -hmm. Oh. Aldrich is a bit of a theater brat. 
to to say the very least. I'd imagine I'd imagine that his that his hero unif that his hero outfit would look would look a would look a bit more like like they like a I'd say an I'd say an opera performer's outfit or uh -huh. the or the um suit that, or the suit that a conductor would would wear for an orchestra. Uh huh. So you're trying to make him look like the music master from Batman: The Brave and the Bold. Got it. <clears throat> <laughs> Fuck off. Um. <laughs> I was, was hope I was hoping t I was I was hoping to lean more lean more operatic, but then again then again that still counts. So fuck. <laughs> Especially considering who plays the music meister. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, watch the Batman, the Brave and the Bold, especially that episode. Uh, music meister is Neil Patrick Harris, who is, of course, a theater brat and no stranger to show tunes, the stage, and singing. Um, but I... Uh, as for what you might think of a theater brat, if you ever took drama class in high school, it is that one kid, and everyone who took drama class in high school knows exactly the kid I'm talking about. You might want to you might want to have to explain it because I'm pretty sure a good chunk of our audience was a bit was a bit too shy to do drama class. <laughs> I was I wasn't, but I know I'm the exception to the rule. I was not. I took drama class. like, And then they tried to ask me to do choir class, and I was like, I like to sing to myself, thank you. <clears throat> but, uh... They're the kid that is extremely outrageous in many of the things they do. <laughs> it It is... The flamboyance is there because everything is a performance. When they say all the world's a stage, they mean it literally. That is a theater brat. Someone yeah. who's always into the theatrics. And I would I would say I would say that they would make perfect for for running gags of 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 the, of them being enthusi enthusiastically trying to be encouraging and enthu and just as enthusiastic in their crying when they when they get shot down on things. Um, of course. I just I just re I just realized that that's not too far off from from Alex Luis Armstrong. <laughs> yes, but uh, unlike unlike uh unlike vibrato here, uh, Alex is a uh, is only like that because of his aesthetics. He didn't ever take theater or anything like that. No. And he's been bullied by the rest of his family forever. As we see when how with how Olivier uh treats him. Or, tr or treats or treats every any newcomer for that matter. <laughs> um next is Marcus Hausch. Hero name backdraft quirk heat haze. This was one of the this was one of the more challenging ones because of what we got when we die when we did the die roll for this. So what we had initially, we we decided to scrap for something a little bit more focused and appropriately thematic. Because mm -hmm. the original one had a had a fair amount of psychic stuff, which the the amount of full the amount of psychics in my Hero Academia is very low. And we're not even sure that anybody but one of them is actually psychic. Mm -hmm. So inst instead we just instead we decided to focus on on the on on the um on the weapon and and the weapon and resistance setup that he has. So I I believe we I believe we set I believe we set it up that he that he that when it comes to energy, especially at first at first it's heat, but but in truth it's it, but in truth it's a whole lot of different varieties of energy types. Um, he's a he is a light he is a lightning rod. It's just that he's a lightning rod that's a lot stronger when he has something to channel it through, like some sort of object. Mm -hmm. And his preferred object is. 
is a um is a large shield that would that you'd see used by firemen or riot guard. Yes. Um. The the key th the and I say the reason that we went with the lightning rod approach is even th originally the idea was that he negates, but that energy's got to go somewhere. And the, and thus we have the lightning rod thing that he that he redirect he redirects it through his body into the into the ground or into the air or anywhere else it might be uh, harmless. Yeah. Um. There is a, there. I would say that the drawback with with him is that there is a, is that there is a upper limit to how to how much. How much he can handle because that because for him, get um negating that energy is like filling up a container. Yeah, and he has to he has to get rid of it all at some point. Mm -hmm. If he continues to build it up, he'll have the same problem uh, uh, Shoto did with the cold. He'll build up too much and be unable to. Uh, use the quirk effectively because it's affecting his physicality. Mm -hmm. Although Shoto's was with cold and him freezing, <laughs> still. Yeah. But the f but in in back in backdraft's case, it's it's more of the fact that it's a, a, that if he if he takes in too much, he he'll st he'll he'll no longer be able to actually contain that en that energy. Um. And you you do have of course with this kind of thing you do have the possibility that he's the ideal counter attacker. Just with just counter attackers with um non physical attacks. Mm hmm. Um in some in in some regards you you could bring up Bishop's um rechanneling of energy as as a point of comparison. But it but I'd say I'd say it's not a, I'd say that's not a 100% one to one since he can he can't store the energy. He's got he's got to get rid of it one way one way or the other whether that, whether that be as some sort of counterattack or just dispersing it. And when it comes to when it comes to his particular approach, we did joke about hi, about him being very safety first um not too far removed from Ida. Yeah, I mean that sort of uh, of sense of responsibility would be passed down from being in a family of, well, public safety professionals. Mm -hmm. like his, I'd say, I'd say his, I'd, I'd say some, some, some members, at least one member of his family runs runs a fire department ladder. Possibly. Makes sense that there would be someone like that in there. Mm -hmm. um. Next is Amelia Curtis, our our fa our favorite entry. Um, hero name Sonic Bloom, quirk Wind Tunnel. I believe the approach that we went with her is that she is. That she uses she uses air manipulation to create to create vacuums in order to propel herself, which she can do at great speed. The problem is she's not, because of the fact that she's messing with resistance. She's not very good at the whole brakes thing. Brakes? What are those? A suggestion? Her idea of brakes is some is something solid in the way that that stops, which is what, which is probably why. I'd imagine that her, uh, it there were two there were two um ideas that I had when it came to her when it came to her hero outfit. One of them it one of them looks like a old like an old school, um pro, um prop era pilot. Mm -hmm. Um. The uh, the other is um is is some sort of is some is some sort of um hev some sort of heavily protected suit. But I on the other hand. I feel like she, I feel like she she probably loves um 
She loves motorsports and th and and similar sports that involve things going very fast. I can see that. As ju as just as much of a, uh, probably probably um, given the given where given where this this school is, prob probably a big probably a big fan of IndyCar. Or maybe IndyCar's too slow for her and she's into Formula One. <laughs> Either, either, either prob probably a bit, probably a bit of both, since in, since IndyCar is always at its peak in May. <laughs> uh, but there, but there is a, there is a bit of a habit of her of her to arrive by crashing into things. And the only and the only reason she uh, escapes major injury is because she's at least learned to create a small amount of air cushion between her and what she'll crash into. Yeah. But there's plenty. There's plenty of cases where she'll cr where she'll crash into walls, windows, or, or the like. A and you see you see a ha you see a hand you see a hand coming out of the rubble and and her going I'm okay. Yeah. Um. But I do, th I do think the vibe that the vibe that I, the vibe that I think I think we get I think we gave her is that she is is despite is is her being honest but way but way 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 too reckless with her with her with her abilities and just in general. Yeah, I I think the approach we went with was uh, she's. Naive to a fault. I I I can go with, I can go with that. I naive naive to a fault, but ex, but extremely adventurous. Probably the kind of person who would um in in another situation would would try and would try and build a plane and tr and try their hand at flugtag. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Which, if you've never seen Flugtag, Flugtag is a is a tr is a treat of comedy. You've got a bunch of you got a bunch of people trying to trying to do human powered flight and no one succeeding. Although some people do end up falling in style. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a matter of how of um how far before you start falling. Yep. Um. Uh. Next is Irvine Thales, hero name Hadron, quirk Event Horizon. A whole lot of of manipulating space time, and manipulating manipulating gravity, as well as as well as some forms of not just invisibility but intangibility. It's essentially affecting. In the end, this is affecting. Gravity and the uh, the nuclear forces. Mm -hmm. Oh, and because because uh, because of that, they um, Irvine is Irvine's very good. Irvine's very good at control. And I you hint you hinted that you hinted that that some that someone down the list. Had had managed to kick Oscar's ass. I'm going to assume you were talking about Irvine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. E even if, even if you know he just beat him yesterday, like Hadron. Um. Hadron is it, the the way I've always seen him. I've seen Irvine doing things. Uh, he's very serious about what he does not necessarily to the point of being too serious for his own good mm -hmm. and not to the point of being seen as brooding or or chuny mm -hmm. but just hey i'm here to learn to be a hero uh you really sh should not be acting like you're top shit because we don't know who's top shit and then, you know, Oscar pushes the issue, pushes the issue, pushes the issue, summons some fucking earth armor and weapons, and uh, Hadron's like, God damn, 
How many times am I going to have to teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> is how it eventually turns out. It'd probably it'd probably be a short ass fight because you'd probably I could easily see Oscar do Oscar doing doing the charge armaments in hand and then face plant. Or to, yeah. or, to put, or to put it or to put it even better, um, sit boy. <laughs> Or Oscar doing the charge and then trying to hit Hadron and Hadron's already gone intangible. Like, he's oh. still standing there. You can see him just fine. Uh, Oscar flies right through Irvine. Yeah. Fight me fairly, you coward! And that's at the point where Hadron goes, this is a fair fight. We're both using our powers to their utmost. If you can't hit me, I can't lose. Which would piss off Oscar to no end. Yeah, then then you, you can't... have then you have the leap, and then he decides, okay, down you go. Yep. Which there'd be plenty of ways that 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 Oscar and Irvine would get on each other's nerves, and then inevitably Irvine's the only one who can keep him down a notch. Mm -hmm. Oh. And what? The I'd say in, I'd say in this case is it would it's base it's basically um basically taking taking that earth armor and making it and turning it against him because well armor armor on its own is he, is heavy as all hell and he and he just and he just made it weigh a whole lot more. Yep. Plus, depending on what's in that armor, he can uh he can change its specific gravity to something fairly dense. Mm -hmm. Which would be, you know, extremely, extremely destructive. Yeah. Um, now one would, one could easily argue that this kind of, that this kind of quirk is a bit OP. I'd say the, the approach that I'd go with is that unlike, unlike say, unlike say Finn, Irvine can't, Irvine can't use mo can't use multiple ver can't use multiple powers at once. Yet, the entire point of of these what these schools do is to use the quirk to the utmost. Yeah, well, he can't he can't do it he can't do it now. Um, not to mention the fact you say this quirk to anyone who says this quirk is OP. I refer you to the main character of the source material. <laughs> Quirks are not made equal. It's just like any other genetic inheritance. You can have quirks that are extremely useful or powerful, and you can have quirks like the kid who stretches his fucking eyeballs. From the very beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, now next is Carol Engel. Hero name Cordyceps. Quirk name Seedbed. It is. It would be very. It would be very tempting to get to give her Pamela Isley leanings, but we're not going that route. Um, no, nope, she's more like a doctor than a biologist. Mm -hmm. That's that said, she do, I'd say she. I'd say she does like cultivating things. Of course. And, see, and, see, and seeing how and seeing how things grow and develop, she. I'd say I'd say if there's I'd say if there's anybody who'd probably be who'd probably be the class's equivalent to a den mother, it would be Carol. Of course, she'd want everybody to be happy and healthy, mm -hmm. even if that can sometimes get overbearing. Yeah, I'd I'd say I'd say that you could easily have a running gag of her um of her of her promoting of her promoting certain er, certain herbal medicines. And you know, you know the gag whenever whenever herbal medicines show show up in in any show. Yep. I mean, it might be good for you, but it t but it certainly ain't gonna taste like it. Except her herbal medicines are a little more direct. She's just gonna put a little seed under your skin, and you should feel better in no time. Mm -hmm. Which, um, obviously, that's gonna that's going to weird people out, even if even if her intentions are not nefarious. I'll just stick the seed in you, and once it finally sprouts, you'll feel better in no time. And of course, you're gonna have that uh, hor that horror thought pub uh, bubble come over somebody's head of, "Oh God, she's gonna turn me into a plant." <laughs> oh. 
but I, but I would, say, I would say that she's that she does a whole lot of experimenting when it comes to, when it com when it comes to herbal medicine. Some of those experiments tend to tend to go be tend to go better than others. Um, there's probably as the experiments do. There's probably the unwritten rule of if she if she give if she gives you if she gives you some blend to drink, don't. Unless you're absolutely sure it has nothing to do with her plants. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way she could have gotten it from her plants. Like, it, you are nowhere near her plants, and she got it out of, like, a vending machine in front of you, right yeah. then and there. It'd be very tempting to make to to make her, to make her make her some sort of vegan or some sort of or some sort of hippie or something like that. I'm not I'm not going that route. Oh no, um, I actually think that she would be against veganism. Well, if only because of uh, of the fact that it doesn't uh, it doesn't pertain to the proper uh, cycle of life. That and that and, pro and pro probably she dumb. Well, a big cr a big critique I've had I've had with ve I've had with veganism is the amount of cheat food that e that exists within it. You know stuff. You know, using plants to to mimic the to mimic the effects of to mimic the appearance and f and taste of meat. Yeah, I am. Um... I just think it's, I think it's silly. You know, people eat what you eat, whatever. Just don't shove it in my face that you eat a certain way and it somehow makes you morally better. Yeah. I, but I that is a tirade. Before I'll, I'll close, I'll close that little side tangent on this. I have no problem with, with people, with people who are vegans. I have every problem with people who, who evangelize having a vegan lifestyle. It's not a lifestyle, it's a fucking diet. Get your head out of your ass. And then of course the you know, there's the whole meme that is made about that specific type of person. How do you know someone's a vegan? Don't worry, they'll tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> oh. But uh the last she, she, Oh, I was gonna say she um she would likely uh plot I think that when it comes to the eating thing, she would actually probably give them all extremely tailored and really good tasting uh, meal plans mm -hmm. that some of them might not even follow because they're either too stubborn, such as uh, Oscar, or don't read it, such as our 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 sweet little sunshine. Air cannon. <laughs> oh. I don't even want to call her by her name. She's sweet little sunshine air cannon now. God damn it. <laughs> oh. Yes, I know. Yeah. Um <clears throat> The last one on the, the last one of the of the ten that we have is Thorvald Eriksson. Hero name Thrudgelmir. Quirk Jotun. This is a this is putting a First off, even be even before he uses the more notorious part of his quirk, this is a guy who it, who um has an extremely high, an ex extremely high density when it comes to muscle and bone, and and is a and is a gym rat at to put to put it on top of that. So he is he is somebody who is who is built who is built like a truck for his age, and um. And could and could probably compete in could probably could compete and probably has competed in Ironman competitions. His, if you guys have ever heard the term "built like a brick shit house," he's the definition. And now, I actually, all the way at the beginning of this, when we talked about Finn, I said there was one person who was his perfect counter. The one person he couldn't even bring himself to, to, uh, to pull pranks on, because he he'll even pull pranks on our little sunshine air cannon Amelia, um, but he will not pull pranks on Thorvald. Thorvald is, if, if if Carol is our is our den mother, Thorvald is very much the big bro, yes. and not just in size. 
I I believe I had said that he I believe we had said that he is a Nor he is the Norse equivalent to Colossus from X Men. Yes, the big bro. Mm -hmm. He's he's he is our Norse Colossus, who uh, literally grows to like thirty meters tall. Yeah. Yes, he's he's half the size of Combatler. So what? He can still take it down in a sumo hold. And I don't know. I don't actually know if they uh, if he could. The combatler's pretty powerful, but still, um, he, he's he's a solid person, mm -hmm. pretty warm, slightly quiet at times. Um, his what? hobbies beyond gym ratting um, are. I think he'd take nature hikes. He'd probably honestly he'd probably take nature hikes. He probably he probably enjoys he probably enjoys fishing quite a bit. Um. He can't. He can't do boat or he can't do boat or ice fishing for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he. But he. But he enjoy. He enjoy. He enjoys. Be, he enjoys being out in nature. He probably. Um, he probably. He probably goes to. He probably goes to Ren. He probably goes to a Ren fair every year. Um, Likely. He prob. He probably has. He probably has family who who help who help out with some of those. Um, and he's always willing to give to be your spotter if you want to go to the gym. Yeah, like I, I said, big bro. I will. I will admit that when I con when I concepted um, when I concepted Thorvald, I ha I I kind of based him on some of the on some of the gym rats who who I've who I've met personally. Who are there's I always I always find it funny when um. When pe when people say they don't want to get ju they don't want to get judged for the for how, for how they look with, and that's one of the reasons for going to the gym. Whereas, actual gym rats, the kind the kind of people who will spend who will spend a, who will spend a long ass time working out, are some of the most wholesome motherfuckers you will find. They see everybody who comes into the gym and sticks with it as somebody who is trying to improve themselves. Mm -hmm. They aren't going to make fun of you for being out of shape and overweight because. At one point in their lives, they may have been out of sh out of shape and overweight too, and they know that there is a journey to be made, and if you stick to it, it's a good journey. Mm -hmm. But he, but um, when it I would say I would, I would say that he's he's someone else who Oscar probably tried to pick a fight with, and he and Thor Thorvald Thor didn't even <laughs> he did he did. He didn't even he didn't even sell getting hit getting hit with rocks. Like like he didn't he, he, Oscar tried to start a fight. Thorvald said, "What is this?" and just kept walking. <laughs> like or even better, puts an arm around Oscar's shoulders and now Oscar can't move. Mm -hmm. Buddy, come on. We're all trying to learn to be good heroes here. Not everything's about fighting. Yep. You gotta learn other things too, bro. Come with me. I'm gonna show you a nice workout that'll help you with your swing. <laughs> At this point, Oscar runs away like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> um, but that co that cover... Now, we did, si we did say... Or we did say early on that... Uh, that if there's anybody who, if there's anybody who would be a guest teacher from from the from the core branch of UA um, to ha to handle this hero course, it would be present Mike. Yes, um, primarily because of the fact that present Mike is a, a a celebrity and b a communications expert. He knows fluent English according to his profile. Mm -hmm. So I think you said that he's exactly the kind of teacher that uh, w that would work with this kind with this kind of pe with these kind of people. Yes, um, the 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 type of teaching system in Japan where they have the different teachers come into the same classroom um, isn't exactly the same as how teaching tends to work in the U.S. Uh, Homeroom and such still does exist. You usually do have a different teacher for each subject, but you move from classroom to classroom and not otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, not to mention the fact that present Mike as a face would also make a good headmaster 
for another branch of UA if that were to be the case. But as we have him as a, as a sort of a guest to show up, give them you know a nice speech, maybe give them some some courses from Japan before he has to head back for whatever reason. Uh, his attitude, President Mike's attitude, and the fact that he's just he's really open and uh, and just kind of the, that hyper that high intensity hyper energy type person would definitely go over well with a lot of Americans. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, with with that said, there is the there is the issue we've we've mentioned some of the archetypes that a lot of the cast would fill, but. One thing I think one thing I think we need to nail down is who the perspective who the primary perspective character would be. Even though even though a series like My Hero Academia has has a large cast, for the for the most part the primary perspective is Izuku Midoriya. Yes, Deku himself. Mm-hmm. Um Hmm. That's a good question because a lot of these people have the have the uh, the makings of a main character. I'd s- um, I'd say I'd say some of I'd say some of them are pr- some of them are probably a bit di- are probably a bit disqualified. Obviously, Oscar isn't going to be isn't going to be doing that. <laughs> true, and he's probably not even going to be a rival character for that matter. He's he's. He's more easily dismissed because of his hot-headed nature, um, and because of his his need to prove himself in a negative fashion. To be quite, um, to be quite honest, there are there are two when I when I look at the, when I look at the ten that we have, there are there are two that I see that I um, that I see as being the most qualified, and that uh, is go. um Finn Hako and Cal Bridger. Okay. Um I was actually I was actually also going to say Marcus. Backdraft. I was I was te- I was tempted but um the big the the one the one that strikes me the most is Kyle because of because of the whole because of the whole him him having him having something to prove. When it comes when it comes to when it comes to the family that he comes from, yeah. Um, Kyle and Finn. We could make it a, a show of deuteragonists. Um, only because both of them actually have a lot to go into, like a lot to go into. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyle, of course, being from a family of tech geeks, wanting to prove that he can be more than that. And still falling into the absent-minded engineer, and Finn being this one person on the surface, but there's so much more expectation. The the because you know we've already established the trick war at home mm-hmm. is an extension of their probably their own internal training. Yeah, <laughs> almost almost like teachings of his clan passed down, coming from. The time his clan may have been established in Japan, all the way to their immigration to the U.S. and now. Mm-hmm. I could Japanese Scotsman, two different clan types, but both very tied to clan. <sighs> Which um, does does make me ask the, does make me ask the unfortunate question: Can he caber toss? He can certainly make it look like he can. <laughs> oh. Also, if I if I have if I ha- as tempting as it would be to have it to have his hero outfit look like a um look like a ninja wearing a kilt, I don't I think that would be a little too obvious. That's as humorous as just about anything Rowdy Roddy Piper ever wore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I do th- I do think that Finn and Cal would could be um. Could 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 act as Deuteragonists because of the fact that in in a lot of ways the two of them would be complementary opposites of each other. Finn, ev- Finn, um, even with his, even with his whole long term planning it with when it comes to pranks, he um he d- he does lean a bit towards the spontaneity of things. 
Whereas whereas Kyle um, doesn't is is very is very good is very good at some um, at solving thi at solving things, but he te but he tends to get lost in his own head. Yeah, not to mention the fact that Kyle is we, we can already see from his from the way he does things, he's very seriously minded. Mm -hmm. And Finn is uh, well, Finn on the surface isn't. Mm -hmm. But there's an expectation. When you're when there's expectations settled on you by clan by by clan association in two different parts of the world, and there's a certain set of expectations behind your mindset. A prank war amongst a family that is that thought out and is like and it has its own you know rules of engagement and that and it also is a way to hone skills is not at that point a game anymore. It's a training exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it may seem fun in games, and it is fun in games so that the training exercise doesn't get anyone hurt, but it's still a training exercise. So there's, there's, a, there's a, a set of familial obligations, whereas uh, Kyle doesn't have familial obligations. He has familial association he's trying to break away from. Mm -hmm. And I'd say put more simply, one is trying to fulfill their obli the obligation to family, the other is trying to uh, break free from their obligation to family. Mm -hmm. And I'd I'd say as tempting as it as tempting as it is to have um to have to have Oscar be the be the um rival archetype um i don't th i'm actually i'm actually leaning more towards having um more towards having either Marcus or Z or Zaha do it no not not Marcus what am I, what am i saying Zaha um Zaha is certainly is certainly a consideration because of her Chess because of her chess master approach. The other one, the other one I could I could see f filling in that rival is Irvine. Definitely Irvine for sure. Um, and if we're going to have deuteragonists and they have rivals, and it's de it, then the rivals are deuter antagonists technically. Yeah. It's Irvine, Irvine is Irvine is very Irvine is very serious, which is com which is commendable. But I get I get the feeling his flaw is that he do is that he doesn't see the bigger picture when it comes to be when it comes to being a hero. Um, I'd say I say that the thing that he do that he doesn't quite get is the idea of a hero as a symbol. Not only not as not not just a hero as a symbol, but a hero as working with others. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that he look he looks as he looks at hero work as a job or a or a obligation. Uh, not just an obligation, but an obligation that you can only count on yourself to fulfill. That you you can't you can trust others with ma many things in your life. You can create friends, but when it when the chips are down, when everything is on the line. When you when it, when the choice is, is let some people die in a burning building, or stop or uh, uh, or save them and the bad guy gets away, you you're the only person that you can count on in that situation. There isn't anybody else around there who's going to save the people or stop the bad guy. So you have to choose one. Mm -hmm. he, so he, he he loses the bigger picture of teamwork and symbolism. And when it com when it comes to when it com when it comes to um Z when it comes to Zaha, um, we've gone over her flaws. Yes. She 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 can observe the picture and formulate the solution, but her games and all her games also always a long game, sometimes too long term. There's no there's no quick judgment, and the time to observe things. Really depends on her her familiarity with them already. Mm -hmm. So, 
the less familiar she is with something, the longer she has to take to observe her analysis. And I'm pr I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that uh, when it comes to, if you were if we were to pair the these two dude um dude pro dude um dude antagonist dude antagonist yeah dude antagonist which isn't a word but I think we just made it one. Well, I mean they're they're a pair they're a paired set of antagonists for the paired set of protagonists so you have dude antagonist and dude antagonist. Finn I'd say Finn and Zaha would be on opposite ends of this on opposite ends of it. And, because of the planning aspect, yeah. Yeah. Whereas Ky I'd say Kyle and um Kyle and Irvine would be on would be on opposite ends of each other. Yeah. Most definitely. Bo both of them both of them certainly take the the hero thing seriously. But um, but one is doing it for one is doing it for personal growth and aspiration, and the other is doing it because he doesn't think anybody else can. Mm -hmm. Maybe he had a bad experience where some heroes failed to save some family he knew or something. Cliche. It's it's a bit cliche, but possibly. Well, it's right. a trope that would fit. Yeah. Used correctly. Remember, it's only cliche if it's used improperly or ho or shoehorned in. Mm -hmm. Just remember, everybody, go to TV tropes and look up tropes are not bad. If you're gonna if you're gonna look up tropes all the damn time, you may as well you may as well look up at one that the one that actually matters. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> but um, I also see whoever their homeroom teacher is. Much like how Aizawa is the homeroom teacher for everybody in My Hero Academia. Mm -hmm. um, this homeroom teacher is going to be someone local to the area that UA Great Lakes is built in. Mm -hmm. With a community-oriented mindset. He's going to be somebody who's worried about the people on the ground. And how... You know, super crime affects the normal person. Because of that, he also has he or she mm -hmm. also has a uh, a view on how heroes have to consider even the smallest among us. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I I will I will admit that um a rec a that the recurring care that um. Well, in the process of doing this, I, I, um, I re, in, especially after talking with Silva, I, um, I reinterpreted Aldine as, as a, um, in a superhero approach and gave her the name Crystal Saint. Um, and I do, I do, I do envision her as, as someone who, who, um, ten, who tends to, tends to travel around, tends to be a more, a more inter a more international hero, someone who's not technically ranked because they don't pick one particular region and and stick around there. Yeah. Um. Who could who could sh who could show up at UA Great Lakes a few a few times to to get to give a bit of a lecture as well as well as as well as do a demonstration on co on um, combat training. And you, you remember when we had the when, when we had that gag in the Ruby reconstruction of um of Crow doing co doing combat training instructions? Yeah. Um you can easily have that you can easily have that that um se that second one of uh because given how, given how varied that win that winter magic ab ability of hers is there's a whole lot of ways that that someone can be countered chief among them being well You've got you've you've got there's a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of liquid in the human body. Yep. And wor worse comes to worse, you can um just put just put someone in an ice cage. Yep. Um, but I'd but I would say I would say that as tempting as it would be to to have them to have them go up against a go up against a full on villain, um I don't even I think I don't even th I don't even think the core series did did that f did that in the first few seasons. 
It was mostly fo it was mostly focused on the interpersonal end with the school itself. I mean, Tomura, I don't know if you would count him as a full-on villain. Shigaraki Tomura? Mm -hmm. He was at the end of Season 1. Um, at that point think, in time, no. Yeah. I think the first villain they really dealt with was Stain. And even then, that was halfway through uh, Season 2. Yeah. I'd, I'd, say, I'd say the... Um... The way we'd probably set it up is the is the oh is for is um for for um for Ka, for Kyle he and en he ended up get, he ended up getting he ended up getting his um his submission accepted so he's he's showing up he's showing up a bit a bit later in essentially the equivalent of a transfer mm -hmm. um. Whereas whereas Finn had been whereas Finn had been there since school, since school started in the fall. And yeah. I'd say I'd say I'd say early on the two of them have a have a bit of a misunder a bit of a misunderstanding or he or um he ends up be, he ends up being the wrong target by accident of one of of one of Finn's stunts. I don't even think it would be the wrong target. I think it would be Finn knows there's a new guy coming. He's got to put him through the ropes. Yeah, so he so he he walks he walks into cl he walks into class one day and all of a sudden there's a bucket on his head. Or the equivalent thereof, yeah. Either a, either a bucket or a um or in a, or a eraser. Yeah, the old-fashioned anime tropes that never die. Mm -hmm. Um and event and Obviously, obviously, through looking at the room, he the only the only everybody's largely stone faced about it, except for Kyle, which leads to which leads to them having a bit of an argument. You mean except for Finn? Yeah, Kyle's the one who came through the door. Finn, sorry. Um, yep, Finn's probably got his normal fox face on, aka yeah. the the devilish grin almost all fox like characters have. Mm -hmm. Um, but but Finn ha but Finn has. It's it's but after after that confrontation it's a, it's very it's very much a case of well <laughs> well I guess I guess this I guess this means he's in the war now too. Oh. Uh I think what would happen is Kyle would be upset about it. And confront Finn because Finn's the only one with the devilish grin on his face. Mm -hmm. um, Kyle's probably going to get a little heated about it. Finn is, of course, going to antagonize him with the passive way that only a trickster character can of, oh, I didn't really do anything. Oh, your voice is so loud. Could you keep it down? We're in the classroom st type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, Thorvald gets in in involved and goes, listen, friend, you know, to, to Kyle. This is something he does to everybody. There's no harm in it. He's just playing his merry trick war that he has from home here. And uh, instead of, you know, taking Thorvald's advice of if you don't really react to it, he'll stop targeting you. And instead plots bloody revenge in the back of his brain. The engineer's mind rumbling. How can I best get back up about this? Yeah, and and thus a uh, a never-ending, constantly losing war for Kyle because he can never seem to outwit him. Yeah, I would say that eventually he get, eventually he gets the upper hand. Um, by t by once. um once sim simply simply by turning one of one of Kyle's own not Kyle one of Finn's own schemes against him. Say say he say he say he bumps into him one day and and slips a slips a ma slips a um a rem a remote a um say a magnet into into his pocket or something. Hmm. Uh, so when so when he tr when he tr 
So when Ka when Finn tries to do one of his stunts involving, say, a bucket, the bucket gets st the bucket gets stuck to his clothing. Yeah, I can see that. I was but... I was think I was thinking either that or he f or um to take a page out of my own book, he figures out a way to make a make a no make a noisemaker, knowing managing to figure out where where he's got where he's going to be standing for one t in order to observe one of his stunts. And presses and presses the bu and presses the button at a certain time just to throw him off. It could work. Yeah, I can see that. the po The point is, is that he is that he manages to, he manages to get the upper hand on him once by by fi by using by using his own using his own abilities. Not realizing that uh, Finn has not been using any of his quirk to do his. Mm -hmm. But at the very, at the very least, you at because of that, you end up with a bit of uh, a bit of mutual respect between the two of them. Not before we get a flash of the actual seriousness that underlies this trick war. Mm -hmm. There's almost a, a uh, like when he gets the better of him. There's going to be almost a, a a kind of a split second of time of of. Finn's mindset being it's actual aggression now mm -hmm. because of the seriousness of the war, but then you know he snapped back to the fact that, wait, this person isn't a part of my family. They don't realize what this actually is. Mm -hmm. Almost goes as far as using his own quirk to uh, set up a very, very elaborate trick that would end up with uh, Kyle very, very uh, unenthused. Yeah, but he, the best he, prob he probably remembers that they're about the rules that he, that this sort that this sort of thing has to follow. Uh -huh. um, I I could I could definitely see I could definitely see that. And of course, bo of course, both of them end up getting end up getting bust end up getting busted by 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 at least one of the teachers and 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 have to have to write have to do the whole write an apology one hundred times. Something along those lines. Either that, or they're or they're assigned as a as a hero pair for training for the next month. Yeah, as t as tempting as it would be to do the whole holding two buckets thing, that's not really a thing in the states, so we couldn't get away with that. No, I I think forcing them to work together would be the best one. Mm -hmm. It would take it would take the burgeoning respect they've both built along the trick war along a lot further and they could also help build each other up yeah now, of course for the for the same uh for the same training exercises where everybody is paired uh they're facing everyone but whenever they face uh zaha and irvine it gets a little different and I'd I'd say I'd say when it com I'd say when it comes to Z Zaha probably 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 also finds Finn ver find Finn very anno very annoying because of because of because of Finn's particular stunts. Doesn't think he's taking it seriously at all. Yeah. Um, you want to be if you want to play if you want to play like children, get the hell out of here, of course. Yeah. Uh, whereas. Whereas, Ir whereas Irvine, j Irvine just si just sees um, Kyle as a Kyle as a bit of a as a bit of a rival. Yeah, and then of course Zaha notices that uh, is probably the only person who's noticed that Finn's tricks are not just a simple immediate setup. Mm -hmm. That there's a little bit of of tactical planning there, and she wants to. Uh, basically, plumb the depths of his knowledge and see exactly how far that that particular uh, fox den goes. It's not a rabbit hole, guys, because he's a fox. Get it? <laughs> but uh, and then of course, um, with Kyle, she can see that he gets stuck in his own planning for certain things. But she doesn't see any practical use to it. Mm -hmm. So, 
for for her her rival is is Finn and for Irvine his rival is Kyle. They both have other issues with the other teammate that isn't uh isn't too extensive other than you know Irvine you're not serious I don't care about you to Finn and uh, Zaha uh, you get stuck in your own thoughts way too much kid to uh, to Kyle. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I actually think the uh, the entire season could go could go on about uh, you know the, the various interactions between these these two man teams we have five two man teams all working together doing mock battles rescue situations etc mm-hmm. um, and how differently both te- these these two primary teams that we've pointed out uh, work on these situations and how it sometimes works out better for a Zaha and Irvine. Sometimes it works out better for Kyle and Finn. And then it starts working out better for Kyle and Finn on a more regular basis. Mm-hmm. Where Zaha and Irvine can't just, ju- they just can't seem to get in sync. We're at- and the, Oh, go ahead. Whereas, um, Whereas Finn and Kyle actually actually are getting more in sync. Yeah, and like I said, they're starting to elevate each other. Mm-hmm. Um, Finn Finn can see a few things that Kyle may have never thought of with his exosuit, among other things. Or uh, Kyle can determine some really cool applications, engineering-wise, mm-hmm. for uh, the fire and illusion control. Or even uh, interesting animal interactions that could really help him out. Mm-hmm. And as they brainstorm together, uh, they help shore up the weaker parts of each other's particular vulnerabilities and build up the strengths they already have. Which is kind of the whole point of sticking them together. The teacher was very smart to punish them with that. Oh, def- oh, definitely. But the the season, the season, I think, uh, it would be more slice of lifey than you know my hero academia is because we've already we've already discounted meeting a real villain yet, only because this is a different place with a different structure and probably a different hero based society since we're in the U.S. Um, so a lot of it's going to be slice-of-life battle high school type stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, think the less... Think the less um, outrageous parts of Ranma one half. So, like... Not the Shishi Hokodan episode, because <laughs> covering an entire city in your doom and gloom and and, uh, and depression so that you don't get hurt by your own attack, um, that's a that's a pretty bad that's a, that's a pretty uh, out there one. But you know, martial arts tea ceremony was a little better. So we have we have these. Situations of, you know, their daily lives and then the challenges between each other and then, you know, everyday stuff teenagers have to worry about. They might be super, but they're still teens. Yeah. And when it comes to the, when it comes to the, oh, the, that whole, that whole thing of, of a um, of an American take on on superhero culture. I know that I know that given current events, it would be very tempting to go full cynicism with with that. I'd rather not. Um, I don't. See, so in a world where everybody started getting superpowers, and it's been something like four to five generations of people born with superpowers, mm-hmm. I don't see that sort of cynicism cropping up 
because the hero society would have eventually been established and and that situation wouldn't have become nearly as much as it is yeah um the need the need for widespread education about superherodom in the first place would have to exist mm-hmm. because otherwise what happened when quirks were first discovered the lawless world that you know all for one gained power in is what it would continue to be the entire reason that the hero society eventually rose was the majority of quirk users seeking to reestablish a semblance of order and help humanity mm-hmm. so there's there's a there's a a huge sense of altruism and uh and actual justice in fact uh non buzzword social justice real social justice justice among society because of the the need to deal with so many people getting superpowers and more and more having them as they're born uh in the end uh the the world would probably be a much brighter one than people would give it credit for even over in the US you know barring the actual events of my hero academia the the world is is a pretty bright one at the beginning of the series you know heroes doing what heroes do villains being thwarted society being in a generally good and and uh, bolstered position economies booming uh mainly because with with a lot of peaceful interaction you're you're going to have surplus so i i i think i think that this positive outlook would also get would also extend to you know the exploration we could do in a u.s per, uh, part of that world mm-hmm. oh. especially and i will i will admit that one of the reasons i went with great lakes aside from the things i mentioned beforehand is the is the fact that i am i i have i have grown very tired of see, of seeing of seeing the of of seeing the represent the representation of the U.S. begin and end with New York and New York and L.A. and sometimes Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. Looking at you, Winter Soldier. Yeah, no, di- no disrespect to any of those places, but um, there but there is a whole lot of other places that end up getting overlooked in the process of that and i yes i will i will admit a certain degree of bias because of my love for my home state i no one's i'm not going to deny that for a minute however i do th- i do think it would be a way to represent a kind of a kind of subculture that isn't that isn't seen all that often um it's part of the reason why i have a soft spot for um john San- john sanford's work especially with the prey series of novels mm-hmm and with a lot of them being a lot of them being set in Minnesota. Um, yeah. And one would think that one would think that soft spot would extend to the movie Fargo. Not really. It extends to some parts of the Mighty Ducks movies because I know because they because I because they end up showcasing places like the like the mall, like the Mall of America and um Mickey's Diner. Uh-huh. Um but what but one i but um i do th- i do think that a early, an early bit an early bit of a, an early bit of establishment that we can carry over is the equivalent of the sports festival yeah i can see that um after 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 establishing after step after establishing the cast and and some of the and some of the um shenanigans that we have with them um 
I'd say I'd say one I'd say one of them would one of them would involve wouldn't would involve would involve some would involve um I'd say I'd say I'd say Cal um Cal getting bad ad, Cal getting bad advice about ca about Carol's herbal remedies um and ta and taking from Finn for this one yeah. because not even Finn would do that yeah and ta and and ta and taking ta and because of the fact that they've built up a bit of camaraderie um Finn taking that Finn taking that advice and it ends up it ends up backfiring on him he you mean up, Kyle taking that advice Kyle, Kyle taking that Kyle taking bad advice it ends up backfiring on him he he later he later gets the, gets a bit of the full story when it comes to when it comes to Carol. Um, he gets the story from Finn. Yeah, so, and then Kyle would probably make an offhand remark. I'm surprised you didn't try and make me drink anything of hers. And Finn would look at him and be like, "Please, I might be pulling jokes, but I'd never want anybody to get hurt." Mm -hmm. Um. But at, but it but the capstone of it is is him tr is him trying the, is him trying the thing out. Mm -hmm. And um, the the key thing the key thing with that particular micro story is I've built up that ain't that people who try it tend to tend to lose their lunch or have upset stomachs or something or something like that. Yeah. But he tr and uh, oh god, he tries the thing. He, and he, he'll, he'll, he remark, he remarks that he remarks that it's, that it still tastes foul, but not as bad, not as bad as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind, kind of, um, kind of putting a reversion on that, on that particular gag. Yeah, I think the person who should give him the bad advice is someone who didn't mean to give him bad advice. Aldrich. No, Amelia. Our sunshine wind child, <laughs> um, because of her good nature and naivete, mm -hmm. tell him you know, oh, her herbal remedies are supposed to help everybody. You should try it. Not remembering the time she had one of uh, Carol's herbal remedies, she already forgot about it. It's been what a week. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but as, as far as how you do a micro story when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to Amelia, um. I'd say, I'd say I'd say I'd say it end, I'd say it ends up with one with one of them being um oh, when every, everybody everybody getting into a panic with the whole get with the whole get the hell out of the way um um kind of se kind of scene but yeah um Kyle who doesn't who doesn't know any better and is, and is wondering why every, why everybody's running to one side or the other um Turn, turns around and and sees and sees Amelia bolt, bolting in at breakneck speed. And, th okay. and then cr and then crashing in and then crashing into a wall because that's how these things work. Indeed, mm -hmm. she misses him by by the barest minimum of of clearance. Yeah. And the thing. That that do, while that does res, while that does result in a what the hell what the hell lady you know bec, you know because he because he just, he just had what he just had the human equivalent of a ca, of a cannonball barely barely graze him yep just barely miss him by the tiniest by the tiniest thread Pro, probably end, probably ended up getting knocked around due, due to the due to the um. Due to due to this due to the shock wave. Actually, I think he'd have something for that on his exosuit at the time. So Pro probably he'd instead get some sort of feedback from the suit saying, you know, mm -hmm. warning, you know, general pressures uh, in the uh, in the center of that phenomena uh, expected to exceed thresholds or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. But he, but um, but one one partic one particular thing I could I could easily see with um, with with Kyle, is that he's is that he, 
in a lot in a lot of the mic in a lot of the micro stories that he's involved with, he's able to figure out a way a way to a way to make a way to make some sort of device to help that person. Yeah, I could see that. Because a bit of one particular arc that I see that I see him going with is is being is figuring out how figuring out how to how to use his skill at invention to act to help pe to help make people's lives better and how to help the the other people who are trying to be heroes be better heroes mm -hmm. um hadron of course is going to be the hardest one to convince <laughs> yeah. that's why they are rivals mm -hmm. um now, when it comes to something like this, when it comes to to the equivalent of the sports festival, there's there's a, there's a there's long amounts of traditions of of competitions between 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 different schools. Nothing nothing new. We've all we've all had to go through it in one form or another. I cer I certainly did, and I know you did. Yep. Uh, and you you can easily use that as the as the base for the equivalent of the sports festival. And if it's if it sounds like if it sounds like this is me doing a doing a tournament arc, well, I am. I mean, what was the sports festival if not but an over glorified tournament arc? Mm -hmm. We it's ju it's just that it's just that it would f the focus would the focus would be more on the competition and rather instead of some of the more ridiculous um, games in this sports festival. Mm hmm. Um. Pro probably probably a, probably a whole lot of um a whole lot of two on two bouts. Oh, pro with it, with a fair amount of a fair amount of support staff in case things get a little too hairy. Yeah, and I could also see there uh, as a culmination, um, after a bunch of two on two bouts, it would be the 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 final culmination would be school on school bouts. Mm -hmm. Actual mock warfare, essentially. Yeah. Sim simply due simply due to the fact that some that villains may villains may sometimes may sometimes fight in groups, and that you can't always uh, you can't always determine the strength of just one person as being equivalent to one other person. You may have to use a large group of heroes to subdue just one person. Mm-hmm. But in the, I'd say at I'd say at the I'd say at the tail end of the, of that particular season, that's when you can kind of start building up, um, villains. Hinting at them, yeah. And um. Given, given that one of the be one of the best villains of of the core series who was who was ridiculously slept on. Or, ra or rather, ha or rather, en or rather, ended way too early. Yes, I'm still salty about ho about how about how overhaul was used. Um, I think the whole the whole fan base is monk. Um, I I'm, I mean I feel that th I feel that there is a when it co when it comes to establishing a f a future vi a future villain arc for a hype for a second season. I feel that there is one there is one angle that's almost gift wrapped for us. That being a that being a ri a rival clan to the Heiko. Yeah. Um and they're actually still in Japan. So the reason that they're going to come over and try and move in on Heiko territory uh it's probably due to some of the negative goings on that have been happening in Japan as of late. I e it's get I e um Japan's getting a bit too, getting a bit too hot. It's time it's time to relocate some, to some place to some place where the crazy isn't as crazy. Yeah, I mean, if we look at the current manga arc, there's you know a giant villain war currently going on in a in. In Japan, mm -hmm. uh, so I could see this other hero clan thinking, uh, "We have no dog in this fight. No way to to uh, to approach this war right now. We need to get out of here and regroup." Mm -hmm. And where better to do it than a place where there's already been another secret clan established? 
not not only not only that a, pl a place a place that isn't exactly a hot zone for villain activity at least not right now yeah mm -hmm. but, hasn't gone worldwide yet yeah but they but they they would prob they would probably they would probably establish they would probably go they probably go in on the tur on the turf of of some criminals and basically slowly um cre slowly cre slowly create their own little secret empire yeah um, and ev ev inevitably, inevitably, the hero, the hero class would get involved. Most, in in particular, um, I'd say I'd say this would be the thing that would um that would for that would force UA Great Lakes into being, into being a into being a more boarding academy. Is mm -hmm. and is a assassin trying to take out Finn, which wouldn't get him. Let's let's be honest here. He's he. We're going to see a hint. One of the mini episodes I had an idea for, uh, specifically to build the the um relationship between Finn and Kyle was uh, Kyle would be invited to hang out at Finn's place, mm -hmm. and Finn's place is a giant, anachronistic, terribly Japanese-looking house because his parents. His his dad uh, lost the bet with his mom, and his mom was like, "Nope, full traditional Japanese. We're doing this now. Bye." <laughs> uh, or something of those of that nature. His dad's probably his dad's probably salty about the fact that he can't wear a kilt. Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 the Hakama are pretty breezy, but they're no kilt. That's true. Um, and it's at this point that Kyle goes. I thought you were Scottish. Finn's like, I am. He's like, what about this? Finn, Finn first goes, ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> uh, again, we have, to t we have to tie in the running gag, and he goes, I never said I was just Scottish. Yeah, I'm, I'm, pretty, sh I'm pretty sure any, I'm pretty sure any t anytime anytime Finn says ancient Chinese secret, that's prob that is that is the audience's tell saying he's saying um he's bu he's bullshitting. He's being a dick, yeah. <laughs> um, but he uh th this entire minisode would be Kyle understanding where the the prank war comes from. And and also, I, correctly identifying it for what it actually is. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, Kyle is not unintelligent by any means. He can connect the dots. Oh yeah. Um. Of course, of course, um, of course, we, yeah, of course, that kind, that kind of, that kind of meet the family would be the perfect excuse to do, um. To to do the caber tossing moment, and you can prob <laughs> you can probably have a bit of rubbing it in where um where Kyle a Kyle actually manages to actually manages to toss properly using his equipment. Yes, but then Finn, you know, Finn will win the argument by just going. You used your quirk, I used mine. Ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> oh. But, but um, no, and of course you of, of course that that's where you can have the secret that um that he gets made fun of by his by his own family and the fact that he can't toss. He, he and then he's and then you know you hear the the when Kyle asks him why he's never tried you know why he doesn't toss and or why he can't toss. Finn's answer is, for matter of fact, it's not that I can't toss; it's that I don't see a point in it. So I just never did it. Buddy, but um, I'd say, I'd I'd say when it comes, I'd say when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the whole when it comes to the whole ca when it comes to the whole um cast. Um, 
you definitely you definitely have that you definitely have that that pairing setup that we mentioned. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of focus with with Finn and Kyle. Um, but at the but at this at this particular at this particular venture, their uh, their approach is they, they're we're not really do, we're not really doing a whole lot of villains. We did mention that when, that the um that the Heiko clan's rival ends up establishing themselves, and I'd say a hypothetical season two would be more fi more figuring out how deep the rabbit hole goes with that particular clan. Yeah. Um. Although I know that the assassination attempt is going to surprise everybody. Yeah, that's that's that would be, and like I said, that would be the thing that would get that would get the higher ups at UA Great Lakes to move to move everybody into full on dorms instead instead yeah. of the in and out process that they had been taking up until this point. Yeah, the uh, but but I think that beyond that, the the more surprising thing is going to be. Um, everybody's realization that Finn has never been what he says he has been, except for Kyle. Kyle has seen under the skin. He's been to the house. He knows what's going on. So when the assassination fails because Finn goes full on, oh, it's time for me to use my quirk to its utmost, mm -hmm. um, the assassin pays pretty dearly by burning to death. Yeah. I'm I'm assuming that when you mentioned that up until this point, Qu um, Finn has never used has never used any of his fire abilities. Only illusions of fire, mm -hmm. which which um, of course Backdraft hates because he sees the fire and can't put it out. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but he, the, the... He can't put it out because it doesn't exist. Yeah. But I, I imagine a very short Sakuga sequence of the assassin poised and ready. Um, the whole, All of the group, maybe it's just after some training exercise, they're all out in one of the, uh, the training fields. And the assassin bursts out with his quirk, whatever it might be, to basically try and behead Finn in one go. And... Uh, Finn's already chest ma you know, chess master eighteen steps ahead. Uh the guy attacks an illusion of Finn that's there. I'd, doesn't I'd realize. say I'd say go I'd say go with something classic and that and that being being able being able to create arms or arms and spikes out of out of his body for for the assassin's quirk. Okay. And but like he goes to attack the Finn he sees. Mm -hmm. It's an illusion of Finn. Finn's also invisible because that works hand in hand. And uh, Finn does a little bit of actual fist fighting martial arts because, of course, they're a Japanese clan that is tied into some sort of secret war. Mm -hmm. So they're going to they're gonna have martial arts as part of their, their training. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after he has absolutely brutalized this assassin, um, one small little flame pops up. And the only hint you get that this flame is different from any of the other flames that you have seen come from Finn this entire time is that Backdraft's equipment starts glowing. Like it's like it can feel the heat mm -hmm. all the way from wherever he's standing. And it's just a small glow. It's not like mm -hmm. turning red hot, but there's a, there's some there is a definite lighter quality to it. And Backdraft, of course has a look of of what the hell on his face before this tiny flame probably it's it's going to look like a candle flame no bigger than an inch tall mm -hmm. lands on the guy's chest and he just lights up what, like a flash fire no like like a pillar of flame <laughs> oh. just yeah i can, I can go with that we the fire the fire control that we have in that list in, implies it's actually quite strong. <laughs> um, yeah. So so a, as the pillar of flame goes up and you know the assassin to his credit does not scream as he is dying because he's trained well. Mm -hmm. um, 
the rest of the 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 crew minus Kyle who actually had an inkling of of how Finn's clan actually works um the rest the rest of the class is just like what the fuck Finn and when Finn turns around he's he's not smiling he is his trademark grin that everybody sees all the time is gone Large, largely because yeah. he knows that he knows that this is that this is get this is um this is far this is far beyond the one this is far beyond the pale and two um he prob he probably notices some some sim, some symbol on on the on the assassin's clothing that that um leads that leads him to realize who the, who who he was associated with and while he's never met that clan personally. He knows he knows about them just from all the stories his mother tells. Mm -hmm. But three, and probably most importantly to him, um, though he would never admit it, uh, he considers almost all of his class his friends. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not Marco. Marco's just Marco. Um, <clears throat> Don't you mean Marcus? No, no, Marcus. Backdraft and him still get along. I, I'm. I'm, I'm talking about Mr. Godboy. Yeah, Oscar. I might be using Oscar. Yes, okay. Oscar, Oscar's just Oscar. <laughs> I mean, Oscar's okay, but he's not like full friendship. Yeah. I, um, I totally did not name him Oscar because he's so grouchy. <laughs> but uh, the uh, like he he would be rather concerned with the fact that he just revealed he's. A lot more trained for combat and uh, fighting than he's let on during the entire festival and everything else. Um, especially with the re the revelation that he's got some pretty serious literal firepower, mm -hmm. um, which of course uh, Marcus Backdraft he's he's like I always wanted to put out your fires. He's like eh. I don't use real fires with my friends, though. You know, that sort of thing. Um, but, like, he's just... His, the, the entire look on his face says all at once that this should never have happened and that it's really quite distasteful to him. Mm -hmm. It's just something he never wanted to do. And especially not in front of his friends. And then finally, as a, as a quip to try and return everything to levity that doesn't really fly... Uh, and you'll see why it doesn't really fly in a second. Um, he says, he says to Kyle, see, there really is no point in caber tossing when you have to toss people instead. And the joke doesn't fly. I can hear it. I can hear the, I can hear the gears in your head there, Monk. I can hear, and I'm I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure in the, I'm pretty sure in this kind of situation, um, Kyle would be the one giving him a dressing down on the situation. Um, I don't think Kyle would give him a dressing down. I think Kyle would more be the one to encourage him to have more faith in the rest of his friends. Mm -hmm. Not a, not a like... full on dressing down, but he would but he would he would call he would call him out for keeping this kind of thing a secret. Yeah, and uh, and even you know respond with and don't even begin with your ancient Chinese secret bullshit right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, and Finn's only answer would be like, "The less people that know, the safer they usually are." Notice he didn't go for anyone else but me. Yeah, I'd I'd say I'd say that um. And this and this is this is kind of the point where some of, where the rivalry that the rivalry that had been hint that had been hinted at. Um, bet between between those between those two pairings earlier, it start it starts to dissolve here. It's not completely gone, but, but obviously obviously both both um Zaha and, um Irvine. Irvine. Realize there's big, there's bigger things to deal with. Yeah, 
by the way, I came up with the with the pairings in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so it's obvious Thorvald and Carol would be together because you've got Big Bro and Den Mom. Mm-hmm. Um, Amelia and uh, Aldrich because they're the the sweet sunshine naive wind child mm-hmm. and the uh, theater kid. Yeah. And then, of course, that just leaves Oscar and Marcus, <laughs> and and the teachers, the teachers, um, the teachers' rationale behind that is twofold: one, uh, the only two left, and and two, maybe that cool, may, maybe that cool cat can teach the hothead to cool down. Because backdraft's all about re- redirecting heat. Mm-hmm. It's a pun that even the teacher doesn't really like, <laughs> and everybody groans. <laughs> Got to have that little punchline in there. Yeah, but oh. they're also the the two gear users. Mm-hmm. So, I would, and I would say that. Um... I would I would say that that as part that by the time by the time this season two starts, um, he that um Kyle has Kyle has already significantly upgraded his his um setup. Yeah, it's it's less it's less of an exosuit nowadays and more of more of, more of primitive power armor. Yeah. Um. I could see that. Um, I would also say that uh, at this point, the um, prank war at at the uh, Heiko clan house has been put on hold mm-hmm. for more serious training. So, uh, if you need upon to have the your, start of if you need to have your training arc, that's how you do it. Yep. And the, then, of course, uh, at the start of Season 2, uh, Finn is going to be much more, much, 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 much more versatile with his quirk usage. Mm-hmm. To the point that his suit, whatever his super suit was going to be, his hero costume, um, has changed to be more functional than anything. The, all the little quirkiness that he may have had before to make it look both thematic and slightly functional has been abandoned by the wayside for tr- for full function um, simply as a way to uh, to make sure that he can have the most effective use of his of his power in this oncoming shadow war between his clan and the other. Mm-hmm. Oh. But that's a second season. That's season two. Yeah. And as and I'd say I'd say I'd say within I'd say within the within these within these subsequent seasons you do ha- you you do you would start you would start to have a, a a strong, a stronger, but a stronger, a lot, a lot loose, a lot um, a lot of the earlier rivalries start to go by the wayside, still, mm-hmm. still present, but not, but not the be all, and a and a significant amount of um, amount of camaraderie between Kyle and Finn. Yeah. Um. Now I w- I um, you and. Some of you may have noticed that once again, much like in some of our reconstructions, there isn't a whole lot of shipping going on, largely because a, not, not that kind. Of, we're not doing that kind of story. B, we fucking don't like that kind of shipper. <laughs> I swear to God, if any of you create ships out of the, out of the double fictional, this is this is this is fictional fictional characters of a fictional side story to an already fictional story. This is this is this is two layers of fiction lower. 
if any of you begin shipping our characters with other characters, and we haven't even really written details, I already told the, the shippers I really don't like to start running. But if even y'all boil down to that, I have one simple word for you. Well, one simple phrase. Hikari ni nare. <laughs> if <clears throat> monk you you may want to preserve your ears for a second <clears throat> Guardian thank you never do that again <laughs> I mean, I'll do it whenever I damn well please, monk. <laughs> I, I had to take my headset off. I told you you may want to preserve your ears. I gave you fair warning. Yes, you did, and I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> now, as Tim, now, as I just hope I didn't wake somebody else up. The the other um. The other the other question is that do you do you suppose for a later season that you would have several of them do um, work studies? Um, we don't really have that type of system in the U.S. That sort of internship is uh, is something unique, I think, to Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. I think it would be more that the experts would come to the actual school. Yeah, even with even with that, I do th I do think that having that having them learn learn under 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 established under established heroes in the area and mm -hmm. and, um, and the way and the ins and outs of the way a, a hero agency works is is some is something to consider. Yeah. <coughs> Have, having get, having guest instructors is nice, but I do I do think that um, I do think that uns, that for say for say sp for for say a few days of spring break for instance that that's say that's as good of a time as any to spend a few to have them spend a few days at a um, hero agency. Yeah. Um. It'd be it'd be temp the. The temptation is to use is to use summer break, but I'm not a, I'm not a hundred percent on that. Um, I actually think it would be more likely to happen over spring break. Mm -hmm. uh, especially especially the reason why I said some summer break would be a bad idea is because that would be too long. Yeah. Whereas, whereas with spring break, it's a, it's a week and change. That's that's something that's a bit more workable. Um, I do I do think I do think that certain certain seasonal micro stories can be told, especially especially regarding certain holidays. Um, it it would be the um. I'd say I'd say I'd say the I'd say is the I'd say the food or the food around the food around Christmas time in the Heiko household would be amusing. <laughs> what with one side of the family wanting to wanting to make Japanese dishes and the other side wanting to make <laughs> wanting to make Scottish dishes. So you ha so you have some unholy months. How's it going? Hey there, hey there, JT. <laughs> you um, you jumped. You jumped. You jumped in at a inopportune time. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll get out. <laughs> I mean, we're at the very end of the episode at this point. Yeah. But um, <coughs> but I th I think I think that I think um, I think that I think that is as as good of a spot as a good of a spot to wrap it up. I will be I will be doing a f doing my fair share of it, of interviews. Throughout this week, as well as a as well as a ranking special this Thursday, so keep an eye out for that. And of course, on Friday we'll be do we'll be doing another class with Heavens and Heresies, and a f and a few more and a few more surprises I've got I've got in store. So stay tuned. But until then.
on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.